Hi, this is Asa, and welcome to my audio experience. There's an epidemic called obesity. Yep, it's an epidemic. That's what they're calling it. And kids, they're saying, began in the late 90s with this. The excess weight gain and obesity came when young Americans began about 15 years ago, a new study finds. Well, I could tell you what happened. We got all the fat-free products at the grocery store. So everybody started buying fat-free this, fat-free that. Fat makes you fat. It's about low-fat diet, tons of carbohydrates. And guess what we have now 15 years later? Now our kids are, were obese. 15 years ago, based on that. Now the kids are still obese, even more. But now we have an epidemic of diabetes, type 2. You know, they used to be called adult onset, meaning that it happened in the adult age, over about 35. And now that our young people, one out of three of our young people under the age of 11 have been diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. I mean, you step back and think about that. That's unbelievable. And it stemmed from the trends that were going on with us back in the 90s of the low-fat diet. And so that's where it came from. Although they're, they don't know. Watch this article, okay? So the research documents the emergence of the obesity epidemic among adolescents in the latter half of the 90s and young adults in early 2000, as well as the entire population, said Lee. It's like, we just don't know. I mean, what happened? How in the world did we gain all this weight? I just don't know. I just, I'm, I'm, my mind is boggled. Well, mine's not. So she cited a number of possible factors, including a rise in time spent in front of the TV or computer or, or video games. I'll agree with that. But according to Lee, poor diet and couch potato lifestyles rise when young people leave the parental home and go on their own before starting their own families. That is true to some degree. However, it comes from the low-fat diet. No doubt about it. Not even a question. Because we were just, and we're, people are still in that phase. They still believe that fat makes you fat, and they still eat a bunch of carbs, and that's why everybody's getting sick. Until we get that straightened out, nothing's going to straighten out. So the research is focused on body mass index, which calculates a relationship between weight and height. As the BMI grows, so do concerns arise about obesity and obesity-related raised illnesses, including heart disease, diabetes, some cancer, stroke, liver disease, gallbladder disease, osteoarthritis, and fertility issues. According to the U.S. Centers for Disease Control, the CDC, about one-third of Americans are now either overweight or obese, with slightly more women than men affected. The study of about 100,000 adolescents in the different databases they studied for BMI and they found that the overall BMI increases started earlier and rose faster in females versus males. So in this study, I think I just find it interesting all the way around. And the rest of the article is just a bunch of statistics, it's a bunch of numbers. And I just find it interesting that in this, how we've changed as a nation and how we're changing for the worse, seemingly. Because we're our bodies are getting sicker and we and we're breaking down and it's because of our choices and i think not so much of our choices but you got to make choices with education and if we don't educate if we don't empower people if we don't really tell the truth about what it is to be healthy versus what it is to be sick what it really means if we don't really get down to that then that's going to be our challenge and so my hope is as we move into this next decade that we're headed into with the thoughts of, of thoughts of where is our healthcare system going. There will be a lot of standards that will stay the same, but I think there's going to be a lot that changes and the people, the public are going to demand it. And as they demand it, the need will be filled and it'll be interesting to see how this whole thing plays out. So that is my hope for, for this because what happened 15 years ago, now we've got all these kids that are obese with diabetes. What's going to happen in the next 15 years if we don't do something radical? We have to change. There is no way around it. We have to make some radical changes to get those radical results. 888-283-7272. Let's talk to Michael now. Hi, Michael. I was driving through um, 
uh, North Carolina, I guess, one night, and I picked up your station. I was so happy to hear about it. Um, well, let me tell you. It's great. I've, I'm, I'm 21. Today's actually my birthday. All right. For the past, I'd say, two years, I've been having um, stomach issues. Nothing really severe, but um, after I eat, I'll have I'll experience bloating. Not so much gas. Or constipation, but I will um, I'll, I'll become rather bloated. And I was recently diagnosed with um, irritable bowel syndrome, and um, I'm not medicated for it. I don't do any. Uh, I don't really. I haven't really changed my diet, and it doesn't affect my day to day life so much, except for like I said, when I do eat, um, I'll feel bloated. So I'm, usually, I'll have to you know unbuckle my belt a little bit, give myself some extra room. I was wondering if you have any ideas um, uh, as far as dietary or, or any type of supplements I might take that could settle my stomach or um, help out in any way? Well, the irritable bowel, here's the key. If you've been diagnosed but you're not medicated, there's a lot you can do. Now, IBS or any of the, the bowel syndromes at all that cause irritation, inflammation, whatever, the irritable bowel is a real pretty common but yes, pretty commonly corrected too. And for irritable bowel, one of the first things you want to think about is diet and cutting out inflammatory foods. Anti-inflammatory diet is a key. It's the it's the one you'll find in my book, Empowering Your Health. Now, the key to that is so much of the information that we talk about is about eliminating certain foods, but also about implementing certain foods because food changes everything. Food can be our best medicine. And with IBS, gluten is a key. I don't care what anybody tells you. Gluten is one of the biggest culprits for IBS. Now, cutting that out, you can eat plenty of grains that they make or foods that are made from flour that are gluten-free. They're making it more and more now. So you might want to look into some of that. But cutting out gluten takes seven and a half weeks to completely eliminate out of the system. So that's first things first. Understand that. And then you might have an issue with cow's milk dairy. So cutting that out for a period of time might be a smart thing to do. You can switch over to goat's milk. Goat's milk is the closest molecular structure we have to human mother's milk. Works phenomenal. So those two hand in hand work very well as far as eliminating and what could be causing some of the irritation. The other is serotonin. Believe it or not, one of the brain chemicals that makes you feel good can be a culprit for IBS. It's a strong link to it. Uh, Turkey, chicken, salmon, spinach, and beans, those are all foods that help raise serotonin levels naturally 5-hydroxytryptophan certain supplements omega-3 fatty acids and vitamin b6 those are all known too but you got to be careful with some of those talk with your doctor because if you're taking any medication for anything right now outside of ibs if you have depression or if you're dealing with any of that you got to be very careful you can't be taking a bunch of supplements with that and you want to make sure there's no interactions hope that helps triple eight two eight three 7272 will be right back. Hi, it's Asa. I'm giving you a copy of my best selling book for free to help you in your health journey today. I'll pay for the book. All you do is just cover the small shipping and handling costs. Go to asarx.com and get your free book today. To find out more, connect with On Call Radio online at InShapeNetwork.com. Phone lines are open, 888-283-7272. That's 888-283-7272. Check us out, both Facebook and Twitter. What are you struggling with? Let's talk about it. What about your friends, your family members, your coworkers, your loved ones? Are they dealing with something with their health? You want to talk about it? You want options? You need information? Let's talk about it. You know, fewer Americans right now, smoking is a big topic, and it always has been. And I think that you, you would think that we're coming to a place where we all were like, all right, I know smoking's bad for us. Like, it, it's, it's not one of those things that, well, maybe it's not, maybe it is. It, it has to be. You have to, at some point, you have to think, okay, Putting tobacco, smoking a pack of cigarettes a day, inhaling the smoke, after all we've heard about secondhand smoke, the carcinogenic effect 
that it has on the body. You've got to think at some point, okay, I know smoking is bad for me. Well, check it out. They're saying right now that most Americans think smoking is less risky. That's what I said. So there was a, a bigger view of people in 2008, 2009 that think, people, that think smoking is not as bad for you as in 2007 and 2008. So the percentage of people who perceived a serious smoking risk dropped from 73% down to 71% among all survey participants. And the teens showed even a greater drop in perceived smoking risk during the span from 69% down to 67%. And the survey said that in this, that no state posted an increase in the perceived risk of smoking. And agency news really said that it was all decreased. So, of course, illicit drug use has increased, potentially in a lot of the states. And, however, cocaine use has gone down. But, again, the issue is people think smoking's okay. Like, it's not that bad for you. Eh, it's not that bad. I smoke a pack a day. No big deal. But I've got a news flash for you. Smoking is probably not the best thing you can do for your health. Like you want to empower your health, throw away the cigarettes. I mean, not only is it bad for you, but it's bad for everybody else around you. Secondhand and thirdhand smoke. So if you're a mom, you don't do anything for my child. I would do anything for my baby. Why are you smoking? Well, I don't smoke around the baby. Okay, well, there's what's called thirdhand smoke, Einstein, which is where... The smoke gets in your hair and your clothes, and then when you're holding your baby all day, the baby inhales it from that area, and it's twice as carcinogenic as if they were smoking themselves. It's stupid. Smoking is stupid, in my opinion. It really is. It is the one health, it's the one habit that you could kick and increase your health, your overall chances of not getting sick, not getting a disease. You can increase that chance of not getting sick by 80% just by quitting smoking. So if you're worried about heart disease, cancer, diabetes, arthritis, you're worried about everything that your mom or dad had, and you want to increase your chance of not getting it and your body breaking down, cut out smoking, it'll increase your chances of overall health by 80%. Unbelievable. People can still do it. I don't know why. I don't get it. That's the one, one of those things I just don't get. 888-283-7272. We're here for you. Give me a call. Let's go to Patricia now. Hi, Patricia. I, actually, I'm pregnant. Okay, I'll start with that. I've, I have okay. a little girl on the way. Oh, We're that's great. very excited about it. Um, but what it is is uh, I'm considered high-risk pregnancy. I've got abdominal issues with my, uh, my ovaries, my kidneys, my bladder, and my gallbladder. And um, the pains have been... The last couple of weeks have just been so bad that I can't even get comfortable. And I have, I've had two hospital visits recently that they keep finding glucose in my urine for one. I got, came home with the paperwork saying that I had a urinary tract infection. So I was doing the cranberry juice thing with, you know, the water, but it was making my acid reflux disease and my heartburn just get really bad. So I couldn't handle the cranberry stuff, but, um, the biggest thing is is that I can't even sleep comfortably anymore, and I I don't get very much sleep at all because I'm pretty much hurting 24 hours a day, oh, and no, I just so really want it to quit. <laughs> Kidney stones, gallstones, all this stuff since I've been pregnant, and it's just been a mess. I'm sorry you're going through that. I know it's tough. You know, with all of that, and all of that said, there's a lot that you can do. And one of the biggest issues and, and really challenges for you is going to be radically changing a lot of your lifestyle choices. And when it comes down to it, you focusing on cutting out inflammatory-based foods is going to be the first one. Because you've got a lot of issues going on, but nothing's going to change until your choices change. And that is the reality of it. So we can sit here and break down each one of those one by one, but I think that one of the one of the wisest things that you could do, I mean, for for gallstones and, and for a gallbladder that's not functioning that well, in helping the body cleanse that out, you, there's a liver gallbladder flush that's in my book that works very, very well. There is, I mean, there's certain supplements that can help, glycine and taurine 
There's protocols for that that can be helpful. Kidney stones, stay away from calcium oxalate. That's what forms the stones. How do you do that? Well, there's oxalic acid in most of the dark leafy green vegetables, and your body probably does not process them that well. You probably have low vitamin D levels. I mean, the list goes on and on. We could go on and on about it. But the reality is, at the end of the day, one of the best things you can do is change the way you eat. Change the way you eat. Change the way you live. You really will. It'll change your overall health. So that's what I want to encourage you to do is to make some new changes, to know that, you know, in the middle of having a baby, getting ready to have a baby, and going through all the joy and the pain of all of it, of the process of pregnancy, having a child, nursing a child, doing all of that, if that's what you choose to do is an exciting time, but you have to make best choices for you. And of course, whatever you do is going to impact the baby at some level. So getting your nutrition right, remember health comes from the inside out. And if we begin that phase of thinking and ingrain that in us, then we're on our way to better health. We're on our way to extraordinary health, to live the life that we deserve. Are you ready to chow? It's time for Keto Chow. When it comes to eating healthy, the keto diet has become one of the nutrition leaders in optimizing health, losing unwanted weight, and reaching your health and wellness goals. No extravagant cooking, no long kitchen cleanup, and most importantly, especially for me, it's convenient. Just put quality keto chow powder in a bottle, add some heavy whipping cream or your favorite fat, a little water, and boom, shake it up and you're ready to chow. Keto chow tastes amazing. So make keto chow easy for you and your family today with keto chow. Let's go chow. Visit keto chow online at ketochow.xyz. That's ketochow.xyz. They're small. We want to help. Take from where you are in your current state of health to where? To where you need to be. Why? Because you deserve the kind of health that you deserve. To make the right kind of choices. To be able to live well. To be able to have the kind of energy that you're looking for. To be able to play with your kids at night more than five minutes because you're too tired. Because you've been working all day and just don't have the energy levels. Your get up and go got up and went. As my grandmother used to say. So how do we change that? How do we get it back? Well, we make changes in our life. Seven daily prescriptions that we talk about. We need to do them. We need to apply them in our life. Number one, you want to follow the anti-inflammatory diet that is in my book, Empowering Your Health. List all the food choices from A to B. It also tells you how to do your health from A to Z. It takes you and explains everything down to the bare basics about how to have a healthy lifestyle and how to even do this whole health thing. It explains that to you. That's why I wrote it. I designed it to make it easy for everyone to understand what it really means to get your health back and what to do about it. So that's daily prescription number one. Number two is to make sure you get your blood work done, extensive blood work done every six months by your primary care physician. And they want to check everything, everything from a CBC to a CMP. They want to check your liver and your cholesterol, your vitamin D, your B12, iron levels, and your hormones especially. And that's not just for you ladies. Guys, get your testosterone level checked on a regular basis, especially After age 35, things start changing. I've seen more guys come in with low testosterone levels. It decreases their function all the way around, and it just you just begin to lose things. You lose memory. All kinds of issues can happen. Blood work is so important. Life is in the blood. So get that checked every six months. 
Number three, daily prescription number two, number three, foundational four supplements. You want a good whole food multivitamin, digestive enzymes to break down your food, cod liver oil for your omega-3 fats, and don't forget probiotics. Probiotics put the good bacteria back in the digestive tract. That's your foundational four. Then you go number four, daily prescription number four, water. You have to drink it. Drink half your body weight in ounces of pure non-chlorinated water daily. So if you weigh 200 pounds, you drink 100 ounces of water every single day. Your body's made of about 70 to 75% water, so we have to stay hydrated with the right kind of water. That is also very important. Number five, daily prescription number five, exercise. 30 minutes a day, five days a week doing something you enjoy. Number six is rest. You want to take one day every single week and rest. Just completely chill out and relax. Why? Because your body needs it. You can't go like the Energizer Bunny commercial and go all day long. Your body has to rest. We were designed to rest. And not only that, the sleep you get at, at each day, you need to get in bed at least an hour before midnight. Every minute of sleep you get before midnight is worth four minutes after midnight. Incredible and powerful, and your body needs it. Number seven, no matter what, and I get people that call me here on the show all the time that I talk to, how long has it been since you've been to a doctor? Oh, it's been years. Don't let that happen. Have a primary care physician, family medicine, general practitioner, so that you can prevent things from coming down the pipeline. That is a better way to go. 888-283-7272. That's 888-283-7272. I'm your health and lifestyle coach. Let's go to Jamie. Hi, Jamie. Um, yes. I'm calling because um, I've been struggling with something that I think um, well, it's a physical addiction, but it's more, I think, mental. I right. need your advice on it. I'm a pretty healthy person. I work out five days a week. I eat very strictly, and I have self-control of that. But I was introduced to cigarettes at a young age, and I've been smoking ever since. And I have tried numerous ways to stop, like with patch or gum. I'm just curious what your advice is. And you can't get past it? I haven't been able to yet, no. What is it in your life? I don't smoke a lot. I mean, I don't smoke all day long. I smoke like two at night, but I think that that me that I still need to have those cigarettes. Does it make you go to sleep at night? Does it make me go to sleep? Mm-hmm. Um, no, I wouldn't say one way or the other. I sleep well. You sleep well regardless? Yeah. All right. So why do you take it at night? Why do you not do it during the day? Uh, well, because I work at a gym. I, I teach fitness. I teach health. I, I understand all the reasons why Well, that's why exciting. <laughs> why don't, that, that, that's great. Why don't you do that, and then I'll, I'll, go, I'll just go eat a bunch of junk food tonight, and then we'll just, we'll just have a little party. <laughs> I'm kidding. I understand. So the, the reality is, you understand. I know you get it. Well, but the reality is, you, are, it's more of a mental addiction. What I'm trying to figure out is where the mental addiction is coming from. Are you trying to control something in your life that you feel like you can't control? No, I just, I really like enjoy it on my way home from work. I like just have a couple and then that's. Well, then it is more mental because here's the reality. If you're only doing a couple and you do it at night, it's just become a habit and habits you, you can change easily. So it's just one of those things that you have to kind of dig in. And begin working on that. Now, here's the deal. With nicotine, it's it's kind of a funny thing. It's one of the most addictive substances that we have. But at the end of the day, it's, there's also a natural way to correct it. And one of the, the best ways to correct it, actually, is using nicotinic acid. Nicotinic acid is one little molecule away from the actual nicotine. And it's vitamin B3. So it's a version of something that's completely natural. Nicotinic acid works very well in replacing that nicotine craving. So you could start taking it, do it about 1,000 milligrams three times a day, and it might not even be something that having used something like nicotinic acid, it might just be something as simple as replacing behavior. So when you go home from work, if you're used to smoking cigarettes, maybe start, I know you said you've already tried the gum and all that, but you have to find something else that you enjoy. And it can be something as simple as listening to music, certain anything that can replace the behavior of smoking those cigarettes. But I would start using the nic- nicotinic acid because it will cut the physiological craving of the nicotine. It is identical. It's in the same molecular structure category as nicotine. That's why it sounds the same. It's in the same category. And we've used that 
for a long period of time clinically to help people overcome smoking. Then you can use L-taurine. Taurine is an amino acid, and they found, that, here's the great thing, I know you're just wanting to quit, but the reality is you've created a lot of damage within your lungs. And they found that using L-taurine over a long period of time, you it takes about eight years for your lungs to regenerate completely after the last day that you quit smoking. And if you use L-taurine, it can cut that down by an additional year. So you can use that amino acid. It helps repair the lung tissue. And where there was scarring and when there was damage into the lungs, you can actually have that reversed and, and even help it to renew and regenerate simply by using the Altari. So those are a couple things to do. But really when it comes to the evening, I mean, if, if you want me to tell you what to do, it's just stop. And it's not real hard. It's funny because I, I when I talk to people clinically that have smoked for years, it usually takes something to actually scare them before they will quit smoking, meaning they'll get a diagnosis of cancer or they have a heart attack. And then all of a sudden they just never smoke again. So you won't quit smoking those last two unless you want, want it bad enough. And there's no there's no mind trick that I can give you to eliminate it. It's going to have to come from the want to. If you teach fitness all day long and you're teaching people how to be healthy all day long and then you're smoking the cigarettes, it's not helping anybody. You have to want to get well. It's very true. You have to want it. So at the end of the day, you just have to ask yourself, what do I want? What kind of example do I want to be? And what kind of choice do I, am I going to make tonight when I drive home? Because there's nothing that's really going to cause you to change. You could take everything in the world. You could drink, you know, chew the gum, take the patch, and do all that. But until you're ready to change, nothing's going to change. So get started on that nicotinic acid. Let me know when you quit smoking because I want to hear about it in about a week. Okay, 888-283-7272. That's 888-283-7272. 72, 72. I'm your health and lifestyle coach. Let's go to Skip. Hi, Skip. Welcome to the show, man. Um, I was diagnosed with uh, MAC disease. Okay. Um, it's um, microbacterium, intracellular oh, yeah. avium, something like that. But anyway, basically, it's mycobacterium uh, avium complex is what they call it. Yeah. Right. It's, I guess it's I guess it's just a bacteria that you get. They're not really sure how you get it, it environmentally. Basically, yeah. Not. Right. Um, but. Uh, you know, they want you to take uh, these powerful antibiotics for 12 to 18 months. And I took them, but I wasn't able to take any of them. There's like three different kinds you have to take, and you have to take two or three at a time. And you just, your body couldn't handle it? Is that what happened? What I tell you what, skip, hang tight. We're going into commercial break, and we're going to talk about MAC disease and talk about what we need to do. And you said you were taking the therapy they wanted you to take the antibiotic therapy for 18 months but the reality is there's a lot you can do with mycobacterium avium complex disease it's a lung condition condition as you know and there's several ways to contract it so let's talk about that and what to do about it when we come out of this commercial break triple eight two eight three seventy two seventy two this triple eight two eight three seventy two seventy two whether you're absolutely thriving or challenged in a hospital but remember there's always hope to get your health back Did you know that you can listen to the Asa RX audio experience on Spotify and Pandora? For all the ways to watch and listen, check out our show page at asarx.com slash experience. Connect with On Call Radio and watch On Call TV at inshapenetwork.com.
Lines are open this hour, 888-283-7272. That's 888-283-7272. I'm your health and lifestyle coach. You're listening to the show that's diagnosing hope one caller at a time. Going into the break, talking with Skip. Skip's been dealing with or been diagnosed with and dealing with MAC disease. MAC disease is a lung disease, and it's caused by the mycobac- is caused by mycobacterium. They call it mycobacterium avium complex. That's MAC, lung disease. And so they put you on a series of antibiotics, Skip, and they're wanting you to do that for three, uh, 18 months, correct? Yeah, 12 to 18. But yeah, right. It's standard treatment. Yeah, it's so, really powerful antibiotics. Big time. Yeah, I, I had I got chills and uh, just about every symptom you can imagine. Kind of like kind of like the flu on just about everything I took. Oh yeah, definitely. It can do that, and everybody reacts differently. So you were just in a place where you you couldn't. So you couldn't take them, and you didn't. You weren't able to finish, right? Or did you no, finish? I, no, I did not finish. I was not able to take them more than really uh, about ten days was the most I could take any one of the the treatments they gave me. Okay. There was three different, I, I tried it three different times. Uh, I, tra- I, I took, a, it was mycobutin and oh, yeah. Zambutal and uh, something else, I think Rifatan or Rifabidin, or, and I took it along with Zithromax at the same time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, z Yeah, it's, it's, they're all strong, strong antibiotics. Really, really tough on the system. How, how are you doing now? Well, I mean, I, 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 uh, Get, I have pains in my chest, more more of if I move a certain way. But, you know, basically, you know, you, you just cough up a lot of mucus, you know. It's, yeah, nonstop. Yeah, and um, uh, there's a, one of the symptoms is uh, fatigue. You know, you, you, don't feel, you don't feel good, and, and uh, you know, I, I can, it's more of a sensation in my lungs than anything. But um, What so, are they telling you now? Since you couldn't take the antibiotics, what did your physicians tell you? Well, I, I, you know, to be honest with you, I was kind of fed up with my physician and didn't even tell him I was done with the last uh, the last bit of antibiotics. So, so you just kind of threw your hands up, and said, "Kind of forget yeah, everybody. I, I'm yeah. just going to try to do this on my own." Yeah. Well, there wasn't. There just didn't seem to be, you know, that concerned with me. You know, just, you know, I, I was just fed up. Yeah. I get that, and they're, they're, just so you know, there comes a point too with. With some physicians, and there's there's what's called standard of treatment, or standard of care, right? And it's it's, and literally some physicians can be just like robots. And it's there. Here's the book. Here's what the physician's desk reference says. Here's what the treatment is, or, and it is what it is. And when you ask ten different questions to think outside the box, you just get exactly. deer in the he- you get deer in the headlights. Exactly. Well, I mean, I, here I was taking three different powerful. Uh, antibiotics and on the on the third try you know you, you think you hear from them, like how, how are you doing with that or anything you know but I, I, I didn't hear from them so I know I probably should have called and said hey I can't take this either you way always, yeah you always want no matter how frustrated you get don't don't do the silent treatment it, it's yeah, just well, not a good thing I guess I kind of felt like that was the last that was the last thing we could try as far as uh, she was concerned and so you know I guess I just figured well you know the next step was was you know pursuing some sort of natural uh, treatment. There's some things you can do, and I and I I'll throw them at you, but I'll I'll tell you this: there's you definitely need to work with your doctor, hands down. Even if you just say, "Hey, look, I'm going to take some time, see if I can work on some things on my own. I'll check back in with you in a couple of months." No big deal to do that. It's really not. It's it's fine to go that route. So, and that's what I would encourage you to do, just so they're, you know, she or, or he, they're, so they're in the loop a little bit. But, because Max, a, a, it's a, a really challenging lung condition. You don't want to play around with it for sure. But we got to focus on building the immune system right now. And you want to do something to kill the organism. I mean, even if you could get away with one of the antibiotics through that process, through a short period of time, I mean, long, 18 months is a long time. It is. Uh, let me throw some things at you, and you make the decision on what you want to do. Check with your doctor, and you guys come up with a, with a uh, with a protocol. And I'm telling you that clinically, when we've seen that, we have done the we've seen the antibiotics work well, but we've also seen some natural treatments work well. So I'll, let me. So, end of the day, you want to strengthen the body, and you want to get it to where it can fight. 
you get the immune system to where it can fight and you can stay strong. That's going to cut down on the fatigue and it's going to cut down on a lot of the symptoms that you're having. I like ionic silver. I'm a big fan. It works very well and it's easy for the body to absorb. It's one of the best antivirals and antibacterials that we have. You can combine that with astragalus. Astragalus works very well. It's strong for the immune system and it's great as an antibacterial. Both of those work well together. And then simple things like vitamin C, high levels of vitamin C between 5 and 8,000 milligrams per day. You want to do a buffered pH, as they call it. Vitamin C is a lot easier on your system. But those are that's a good place to start right there. And then when you're eating every single day, even with a bacterial infection, because remember, it's pushing down your immune system. It's stressing out your body, stressing out your immune system. You want to do things to build up your immune system and eating the right kind of foods every single day, avoiding inflammation. And that's all explained in my book, Empowering Your Health. Pick that up at any bookstore. But I encourage you to get started on a couple of those things, and it will help. It will start strengthening the body, building up your immune system. And that really is what the goal for you is right now. And I would I would still talk to your doctors. Now, here's another key. You can start using probiotics. Probiotics can strengthen the immune system in a major way and allow your body to break down a lot of the bacteria and rebuild the good bacteria. So that's something you want to look into as well. But get a copy of my book, Empowering Your Health. I think it's going to help you quite a bit. Remember, there's always hope to get your health back. 888-283-7272. Did you know you could listen to the Asa RX audio experience on Spotify and Pandora? For all the ways to watch and listen, check out our show page at asarx.com slash experience. Hi, it's Asa. I'm giving you a copy of my best-selling book for free to help you in your health journey today. I'll pay for the book. All you do is just cover the small shipping and handling costs. Go to asarx.com and get your free book today. This episode is over, but check episode notes for links to products and services you've heard about on this episode. Thanks for listening and subscribing. Please share the Asa RX audio experience with others and stay in touch by giving us your comment or review.